I was wearing my suit. I had my hair cut. I looked neat and tidy, quite presentable. Mum would have been proud of me. I walked up the staircase at number 10 Downing Street, past the portraits of 49 prime ministers, including Gladstone, Disraeli, Churchill, Macmillan, Wilson, Heath, Callaghan, and then at the top of the stairs, a living prime minister, Margaret Thatcher, the first female prime minister, who was hosting an event for the UN's International Year of Disabled People, which had been a British initiative, but backed by the Libyan government under Colonel Gaddafi. And she had uh, arranged this cocktail party for the staff of the International Year, of which I was one, plus a group of disabled people and Lord Snowden, who had been the president of the year in Britain. It had been very successful. Its whole aim was to change attitudes. And one of the things we really, really tried hard to do was to get rid of this concept of the disabled. It was disabled people, very important. But it was also to look at the hidden disabilities and to maybe discuss ways of preventing disability. So it was a very, very wide remit we had. We had a great staff of people like Carolyn Keane, who went on to be the Lord Mayor of Westminster and to work with the Attenborough Committee on Dis Disability and the Arts, Mary Tynegate, Valerie Blackbourne, lots of really, really good people. And I was but one of the team. So I took the opportunity to say to Mrs. Thatcher, oh, Mrs. Thatcher, Prime Minister, she said very sternly, Oh, Prime Minister, it must be wonderful living in this house with so many memories of all these great Prime Ministers. Do you ever sort of, I live in the present and I'm only interested in the present and the future, not the past. That is not my interest. <gasps> Deep breath. Margaret Thatcher was a very commanding person. She was going to call her autobiography, undefeated, because she had never been defeated. She'd never been defeated in an election for her constituency of Finchley. She'd ne never been defeated in an election. She, in fact, won three elections. And even at the end, when they were trying to get rid of her, she removed herself from the fight rather than be um, defeated. So she was a very, very strong person. But she had this inescapable aura of glamour about her. She was wearing a black lace cocktail dress. Her hair, of course, was immaculately coiffured. Makeup, skin, gloriously illuminated. And as a hostess, I think she was the best party hostess I have ever seen in my life. She spoke to everybody, not just the disabled, not just the bureaucrats, not just the right people. She spoke to absolutely everyone. She even allowed herself a strawberry. Now, I'm on a diet, so I've got to be very, very careful. She was just enchanting. Then the guests left and we stayed behind. We, the Secretariat of the International Year of Disabled People, together with some of her ministers, including Patrick Jenkin. And Patrick Jenkin had been the Minister for Health and Social Services. That was one of the reasons he was invited. And uh, he was obviously terrified of her. In fact, they, all her ministers were terrified of her. You could see it. They were almost trembling. And he said, you know, the problem with working in this government, because it's so radical, remember they were dismantling so many things, they were fighting the unions, they were trying to cope with inflation, they were bringing taxes down, doing all sorts of things that a lot of the public disagreed with. In fact, Margaret was the most hated prime minister of all time. And he said, you know, the worst thing about being in this government is not working with, with the Prime Minister. It's having your children abused at school. He said it's heartbreaking because they reap what we sow. The children get the raw end of the deal when you're a politician. And Patrick Jenkin gave this beautiful speech many, many years later in support of same-sex marriage. And at the time I met him, I thought, you are a really nice person. So everyone went home except us the Prime Minister and her ministers. She took off her shoes and she sat there and she said, you know, I think one of the good things about the House of Commons cafeteria is their Welsh rabbit. 
Welsh Rabbit 20p and for an extra 50p you get a poached egg and that's I think value for money. Oh Patrick turn those lights off we've got to save electricity because you see Margaret was very environmentally minded people forget that. See she was a scientist and she'd done all the science in the early 70s about what was called then the greenhouse effect and the global warming and all those different things. And she was very, very hot on economy, um, saving power, sustainability, all that sort of thing. Anyway, we just sat there and talked. And she turned out to be not exactly a nice, easy person. Of course not. She was a near genius, I'd say, and geniuses are not known for their niceness. They're, they're known for their being a genius, getting things done. Yes, her ministers were like little schoolboys cowering in front of her, the governess, but I thought there was a basic humanity about that, even though I detested her policies at the time. Now, of course, I'm older and dangerously moving into conservative territory. I begin to see that actually she did have some pretty good points, and she was one of the very few politicians, prime ministers, whose manifesto matched what she actually did and was trying to carry out. She didn't change, of course, it was this no U-turn. And uh, she stood her ground uh, and she was very much the only woman in a man's world. However, I later interviewed someone called Linda Chalker, who was a Conservative MP, and she was in all the Conservative ministries over 18 years. So she was actually in the Thatcher government. So this idea that Margaret Thatcher did not want women around her was not true. She wanted to groom and nurture women to get the top job. That was really what she was about. Margaret Thatcher was very ambitious, not ultra conservative, but ultra patriotic. She believed in Britain. She believed that England was a good thing. After all, as she said, you know, the Norman Conquest. Oh, the night of the Norman Conquest, the Anglo-Saxons were partying. The Normans were praying. We should do more praying and less partying. I so agree, Margaret.